Arbok has always been an extremely mediocre Pokemon, but the Teal Mask DLC has given one of the most insane buffs we've seen. Scale Shot is a dragon type move that can hit two to five times while boosting the user's speed and lowering defense. You can now pair this with a loaded dice item which guarantees this move hits at least four times, which makes it 100 base power at the lowest. You use Terra Dragon for added stab boost and Coil to boost attack even further, and we finally have the speedy, hard hitting Mon that Arbok deserved to be. Alright look, so I've been using this Arbok set for a little while now. And it has performed, this thing is actually crazy. But today, we're gonna see if this thing can actually put in work against the scariest of teams. So you'll notice my dude is over there working with a quite interesting team. However, he does not know the true power of Arbok and it's up to me to basically spread the word out here. So if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's the best way to support and I really do appreciate it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna lead off with the biggest, most badass rock bug with sharp, rusty scythes, and I decide to lead off with just a regular bug. I'm just a spider, and my main goal here is to set up the sticky web. So my team can definitely use the speed control, and that's exactly what this uh, area dose is here for. I basically come in, I set up some sticky web, they end up going for the stone axe that does knock me down to my focus ash, knowing that I can definitely get up. The sticky web is really nice. However, they're both able to do damage and set up the stealth rock in the same turn, so this is a common lead that you'll see, and Cleaver is honestly a really cool Pokemon with that uh, with that ability to set up the Stealth Rock there. So, uh, at this point, I don't have a lot that wants to switch into this thing. I'm just going to go for the Sucker Punch, get a little bit of chip damage, and allow the Spider to sacrifice himself. So, he actually finishes me off with the Fury Cutter. Now, Fury Cutter with Cleaver is actually a really interesting strategy. This thing gets the ability called Sharpness, which actually boosts Fury Cutter. Plus, uh, every time you use it, it actually doubles in damage. So, now it's going to be an 80 base power. Uh, plus the sharpness boost, plus stab, uh, plus they could potentially be carrying the metronome item which boosts uh, damage when you use consecutive moves, so honestly Fury Cutter, Cleaver, I like it, but you know who does not play that bullshit? That is my dude Arbok. I come in, I'm able to get an Intimidate which is going to be really nice, and my plan here is to just start setting up some coils. I'm going to wrap myself around which is going to boost my attack and my defenses and also give me an accuracy boost while they are just gonna stay in here and go for that Fury Cutter. So with that defense boost, I am looking really nice. I wanted to stay the poison type basically to be able to resist that. And at this point, with the plus one in both attack and defense, I'm thinking I actually need one more. It's actually important to be able to get a one hit KO on a lot of their Pokemon. And at plus two with two coils, the Arbok is actually going to be in an amazing spot here. Plus I know this Cleaver isn't gonna be able to knock me out here. They do end up going for the Swords Dance here. So that is a little bit scary there. Cleaver's looking extra sharp. Unfortunately for them though, I am gonna be faster. And now it is time to fully reveal <laughs> the power that is Arbok. So I'm gonna go for the Terra Dragon. The reason for that is because we basically just want the stab on our scale shot. And Arbok getting access to scale shot is like the greatest thing ever. Not only that, but you pair it with the loaded dice and guaranteeing at least four hits is definitely gonna be enough, especially uh, with the Terra stab here. So I go for that scale shot. Cleaver being a pretty bulky fella over here is actually able to take it pretty nicely considering I'm at plus two. But all it takes is three scale shots to finish this bad boy off and Arbok is essentially in full form over here. I have my attack and defense boost that I need. I also have the accuracy boost to guarantee I can hit gunk shots if needed. And now, while I do get a defense drop, I actually grab a speed boost. And that is important because now basically Snake go Burr, I'm extremely fast, I hit extremely hard, and honestly it does not matter what Pokemon they have over there. As the Arbok is set up in a way that no Arbok has been before. So, on the revenge switch, they're gonna end up going into the Crown Zation. Now, ordinarily, this is an extremely scary Pokemon to see, no matter what situation you're in. However, I am carrying the Earthquake here, plus with that Sticky Web, I'm able to actually outspeed with just one speed boost, and an Earthquake after two coils is able to take care of it. So, that thing has like a base 150 speed, and that is exactly why we run Sticky Webs on this team, because Arbok can essentially do things that it should never really be able to do. Anyway, on the Revenge Switch, now they're going to end up going into the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Looking like Lord Farquaad chilling over here. This thing is not really that big of a threat, considering I do have the Stab Scale Shot. They are going to end up committing a Terra here. And actually, Calyrex Shadow is two base points faster than the Zacian. This thing's actually at base 150, which is actually insane. Uh, Zacian's 148, but they're going to go ahead and commit that Ghost Terra, as they're hoping essentially they outspeed here, but I got news for you, you're caught up in that sticky web, and I'll tell you what, Arbok is slithering around at, at lightning speed over here. I do get the scale shot off, and with that loaded dice, it's looking like four hits is going to be able to take care of the Calyrex. Uh, they probably go for the Terra there, just to ensure that they're able to get enough damage to knock me out, but you can't hit me if you ain't faster, baby. They're able to take care of it, 
and down goes two Ubers in a row. And uh, honestly, this is just turning into a goofy ass game and we're just gonna push the Arbok and see how far we can go with this thing. So uh, the bad news is we do get a defense drop every time we use the skill shot. So considering I actually had two coils, I'm actually at uh, neutral right now, which is pretty nice. So now they're gonna end up going into the Heatran and Heatran's another dude who is gonna probably face the same fate as this is exactly why uh, we don't want steel types to be able to check the Arbok. I carry that Earthquake, and without an air balloon, the Heatran is definitely going to die to that. So, truly, I did not expect the Arbok to pop off like this, but here we are. And now they end up going into the Breloom. So, after all these kills, Breloom comes in and, of course, is going to be about slow as hell. However, they do have access to that priority in the form of Mach Punch, and that actually does knock me out without any plus defense. Uh, the Arbok is going to go down, but not before we absolutely destroyed the team. And we broke holes in it to the point where hopefully I can still uh, manage to pull off the win here. So, they do still have some scary Pokemon left, but I have a Noctowl. And Noctowl comes in ready to uh, just basically show off what he can do against the Breloom. I consider going for the Hypnosis, mostly just because it would be hilarious to hit. However, if I miss and they mock Punch twice, I die. So, I do just go for the Air Slash here. Knowing that I can take a Mach Punch, I am max HP, I believe, and an Air Slash does end up knocking out the Breloom. So, down goes the Breloom, and now they are down to one Pokemon left, which is going to be the Dollar Sign Ursa King Dollar Sign. Looking like an old Xbox Live gamer tag, and it really doesn't matter what point in the match it is. Ursa Luna, Blood Moon is always extremely scary. So, I'm going to end up going for the Hypnosis here, thinking if I can hit that, it'll be extremely clutch. I do, however, miss, of course, because Hypnosis never hits. It does actually activate my Blunder policy, which is going to give me a plus two boost in speed, which at this point in the match does not matter, but, I mean, that's fine. And they just finished me off with the Blood Moon. So, down goes the Noctowl. Of course, if you know how Blood Moon works, essentially you can't use it twice in a row. So this is why I actually feel confident going into the Dusknoir, knowing that uh, Blood Moon's probably the only thing that can Oko me at this point, and I can hit it hard with a Choice Banded Ice Punch in return. So. The dust comes in thinking, hey, let me just feel you real quick, brother. I'm just gonna just gonna see what you're working with here. I frisk him, find the leftovers. Uh, of course, no big deal. Uh, this thing is at full health and it is scary, but I'm just gonna go for that ice punch. Knowing it's likely a two hit KO, uh, I am able to outspeed because this thing is about slow as hell and in sticky web. As they end up going for the focus blast, I am going to avoid that. Of course, this thing could hit me uh, with both normal and fighting moves because of its ability. And uh, that is fine. The focus miss does exactly what focus miss is built to do. And one more Ice Punch is going to finish off the Angry Bear. So I honestly just thought this was a goofy-ass match. And uh, playing against randos that are using scary-ass teams is really fun for me to basically bring just like some interesting things that they probably don't see coming. So sometimes I do like to just hop on random ladders and just see uh, if I can get some stuff to work. And while it is fun to use Arbok in his respective low tier, it's even more fun to use it uh, against people who do not see it coming. So thank you guys very much for watching, as always. I really do appreciate all the support. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. I've been doing my best to try to stick to daily uploads lately, and the support you guys have been showing is actually insane. And while not all of my battles will be against just basically randoms, I, I do appreciate the support, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.